That's what they didn't add. We clearly know that there... In a PBS interview on The News Hour with Jim Lehrer, National Security Adviser Condoleezza Rice reveals with certainty more evidence of Saddam's supposed terrorist link. We know, too, that um, several of the detainees, uh, in particular some high-ranking detainees, have said that uh, Iraq provided some training uh, to al-Qaeda in uh, chemical weapons uh, development. The key high-ranking detainee Rice is referring to is an al-Qaeda commander named Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi. He's at first interrogated by the FBI using standard interrogation techniques, but the CIA wants more. They seize control of him, they send him to Egypt where he's rendered and turned over to one of the most brutal intelligence services in the world. This is Al Libby years later, in a Libyan prison being visited by his family. This video was recently located by Michael Isakoff. Within weeks of his interrogation in Egypt, Al Libby coughs up this story that he hadn't told the FBI before, that Saddam was training Al Qaeda in chemical and biological weapons. It's the single most frightening story that could have been told post 9-11. Almost from the outset, the intelligence community has doubts about the claim. A 2002 CIA report states that questions persist about al-Libi's forthrightness and truthfulness, and that in some instances he seems to have fabricated information. After the invasion, al-Libi will recant the story that was extracted by the Egyptians' brutal interrogation. What we said at the time was, look, he said two different things at two different times. And we will tell the policy consumers and other analysts in the community both stories. You choose to believe what you choose to believe, but I don't know which one's accurate. The administration chooses to believe the connection. We've learned that Iraq has trained al-Qaeda members in bomb making, in poisons, and deadly gases. Right up to the war and beyond, it remains a key administration argument for war, and the public largely trusts it to be true. If you look at all the key pieces of evidence that they presented publicly at the time, on every single one of them, not only was there doubt, there was debate within the intelligence agencies of the U.S. government. The intelligence community assessed that Saddam Hussein was building a mobile biological weapons capability to avoid detection by the U.S. and its allies. And the assessment was based almost entirely on one source from the German government, a source named Curveball. His real name, as far as they know, is Rafid Ahmed Alwan, an Iraqi engineer who makes his way to Germany and tells German intelligence that he worked in Saddam's mobile weapons labs used to develop weapons of mass destruction. In the intelligence community, Curveball was known to be a fabricator. He could not be relied upon. His intelligence was always, had been sort of stamped, you know, <laughs> do not, do not disseminate, this is, this is useless. Curveball is a lone and seriously suspect source and U.S. intelligence agencies rely solely on German reports. They never actually question him themselves. In this 2011 interview with Britain's newspaper, The Guardian, the man called Curveball confirms the lies of his pre-war claims. This particular issue about the supposed mobile labs uh, was mishandled all the way around, certainly by the intelligence community in terms of how it was assessed, and then became the very heart of the whole case about unconventional weapons. With dubious evidence like that, the White House will present its case for war. The case of Saddam Hussein, a sworn enemy of our country, requires a candid appraisal of the facts. 
simply stated, there is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that he is amassing them to use against our friends, against our allies, and against us. I had a seat at the stage next to the lectern where he was speaking, and I literally bolted at that. With our help, a liberated Iraq can be a great nation once again. Vice President Dick Cheney's speech to the veterans of foreign wars is the opening salvo of the Bush administration's effort to sell to the American people what White House insiders call the product. Thank you very much. It was a shock. It was a total shock. I couldn't believe the vice president was saying this. In doing work with the CIA on Iraq WMD, through all the briefings I heard at Langley, I never saw one piece of credible evidence that there was an ongoing program. And that's when I began to believe they're getting serious about this. They want to go into Iraq. Two weeks after the speech, Cheney again makes his case on national television. What we know is just bits and pieces we gather through the intelligence system, but we do know with absolute certainty that he is using his procurement system to acquire the equipment he needs in order to enrich uranium to build a nuclear weapon. Saddam and nukes, absolute certainty a terrifying prospect based on the CIA's discovery that Iraq is attempting to purchase 60,000 aluminum tubes. Some analysts become convinced that the tubes are intended to be used in centrifuges to make uranium for nuclear weapons. Soon after the discovery, the Department of Energy gets hold of the actual tubes and asks engineering professor Houston Wood, an expert on gas centrifuges, to evaluate them. From the information they gave me, it took me about 15 minutes to come to the conclusion that these tubes could not be used for gas centrifuges. They're too thick. They're too heavy. The Energy Department concludes that the tubes are for conventional rockets, not for nuclear weapons. But CIA analysts stick to their position that the tubes are for centrifuges. And the White House embraces that position. Administration sources leak the disputed findings to the New York Times in September 2002. The paper runs its sensational scoop on the front page. Um, this is, uh, I don't, and I want to Within hours, time, Dick Cheney is Obviously, quoting that yeah, scoop as fact sources, on Meet the Press. It's now public that, in fact, um, he has been seeking to acquire, and we have been able to intercept and prevent him from acquiring through this particular channel. Um, the kinds of tubes that are necessary to build a centrifuge. And I called my friends in Oak Ridge and I said, are these the same tubes that we were talking about last year? And they said, yes. And I said, I thought we put that to rest a year ago. United Nations inspections also... Four days later, commemorating the first anniversary of 9-11, President George W. Bush repeats the claim at the United Nations. Iraq has made several attempts to buy high-strength aluminum tubes used to enrich uranium for a nuclear weapon. I think the Bush administration took a great deal of satisfaction in being able to cite the you know, supposedly liberal New York Times uh, in making their case for it. Absent the aluminum tubes, um, most of the community believes that there is no sufficient evidence to assess that there is a nuclear program. From the African country of Niger comes another nuclear alarm. Italy's military intelligence agency informs the CIA that it has the text of a contract between Iraq and Niger for Saddam to purchase 500 metric tons of yellow cake, a form of uranium suitable for nuclear weapons. Well, there were rather extensive um, written documents about the ways in which Iraq was negotiating to buy very significant amounts of uranium ore. But the State Department expressed how dubious they were about these documents and the likelihood that they were forged. At the time, no one from U.S. intelligence had actually laid eyes on the documents, and they will ultimately turn out to be forgeries. But when a DIA report on the yellow cake claim is presented to Dick Cheney, he orders the CIA to dig deeper. The agency sends to Niger a veteran diplomat with extensive experience in Africa, former Ambassador Joseph Wilson. I knew the foreign minister, who was subsequently the prime minister. I knew the minister of mines. It did not happen. It could not have happened just because of the nature of uranium mining operations in Francophone Africa. Uh, the French maintained control. The most important thing to know 
about the yellow cake story is that the CIA never believed it. But even as speculation, it is enough for administration officials to move ahead with plans to take out Saddam. National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice goes on CNN to alert the nation. The problem here is that there will always be some uncertainty about uh, how quickly he can acquire a nuclear weapon. But we don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. What I was hearing and what I knew did not jive. I asked one time at Langley, am I crazy or is there no credible evidence of an ongoing program? And I had a former deputy director of CIA said to me, you're not crazy. But there are administration voices urging caution. Secretary of State Colin Powell and his senior staff, who, unlike their counterparts at defense, are all former military men, they pressed to give a chance for sanctions to work, for inspections to keep Saddam in check. The concern was we hadn't finished in Afghanistan, and if we went to war in Iraq, we would take the emphasis off Afghanistan, which subsequently is exactly what happened. The administration has Saddam squarely in its sights. The time has come to persuade Congress to squeeze the trigger. One of the most serious responsibilities that Congress has is to cast a vote to send a young man or woman to war to die. With Congress back from its summer recess, administration leaders prepare to make their case to invade Iraq, to eliminate Saddam. Inside the White House, Paul Wolfowitz's deputy, Under Secretary of Defense Douglas Fife, an Iraq hawk like his boss, presents a slideshow to national security officials that is full of questionable assertions. Of all the places where intelligence was being manipulated in the, in the Bush administration, uh, the Fife shop was the key place. There was a debate about how one characterizes the relationship between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. Nobody made the argument that there was no relationship between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. I want to thank the... Uh... The administration deploys its biggest guns to push congressional leaders for quick passage of a resolution to authorize the president to take military action. It's an important signal for the world to see that this country is united in our resolve to deal with um, threats that we face. The president made the point that there was an urgency to taking action, that it couldn't wait. He got very animated. He used uh, uncharacteristically profanity and used the middle finger to demonstrate Saddam Hussein's disdain for the United States and for him personally. A number of members of Congress, mostly Democrats, remain unconvinced. I'm still very skeptical about uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, intent and position. Nothing has changed the basis for that skepticism. The Senate Intelligence Committee requests a national intelligence estimate, a comprehensive summary of the evidence. NIEs are routinely delivered on intelligence issues, yet on this gravest of matters, none yet exists. In three weeks, the CIA pulls together what normally takes months. It is delivered just seven days before the congressional vote. Now, aluminum tubes are interesting, and I know there's controversy associated with it. In my judgment, the CIA director, George Tenet, had become a political spokesperson for the administration. And that is not the role of the CIA. It was too often toeing the line that the administration wanted him to toe. We think we've stumbled onto one avenue of a nuclear weapons program. There's no question that uh, there were erroneous judgments in, in that national intelligence estimate. The purpose was uh, to sell a policy initiative, which was to go to war against Iraq. The 90-page classified NIE asserts that Saddam is actively pursuing his WMD program. It cites the debatable intelligence on aluminum tubes, the yellow cake uranium purchase, and mobile weapons labs. But deep inside that thick document are strongly worded dissents that argue the evidence is weak.